It's a very exciting times for Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia and BTK inhibitors are really at the centerpiece of all the progress being made in this disease. I think it's important for the audience to know though that the reason why we became interested in BTK inhibitors has to do with the discovery of the MYD88 mutation. This is a mutation that we found in about 95 to 97% of all patients with Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. And what's important about this uh, mutation is that it actually activates Bruton's tyrosine kinase. Um, it activates it through a protein called HCK, and both HCK and BTK are targeted by ibrutinib as well as by zanubrutinib. Acalabrutinib, of course, that's also of, uh, has shown a lot of uh, clinical activity in Waldenstrom's targets BTK. Uh, and we also now know about another BTK inhibitor, largely because of the efforts um, uh, being conducted in Japan, that tirabrutinib is also highly active in Waldenstrom. So we now have four BTK inhibitors. We've got ibrutinib, we've got you know, zanubrutinib, we've got acalabrutinib and tirabrutinib, all showing response rates greater than 90% across the board, uh, major response rates somewhere around 80% in these uh, patients. Uh, and what is really very important um, for the audience to take away is that when you look at the uh, activity in previously treated patients, um, whether they're relapsed or refractory, whether they've had one or two or more than three um, lines of therapy, whether they're treatment naive, uh, the drug is active, uh, almost at the same level, 